And before I get into it, I just want to say that this video is very useful. All the media used in this video is useful criticism, review in a transformative way. All the information I present is public information and everything else is alleged a joke or just my opinion. <laughs> So the first thing I want to talk about is Prince Philip's death, but not, not really. I just want to quickly go over this little post that I saw because everyone seems to be forgetting that he wasn't that great of a person. You can send the royal family your condolences, they're probably not going to see it or care. But then don't go on Instagram and be like, oh my god, rep the Duke of Edinburgh, he'll be missed. Will you miss him? Because that says a lot about you. Anyway, the post says, Prince Philip has passed away at the age of 99. While world leaders mourn him, we recall his racist, classist, misogynistic and ableist legacy with some quotes from his past. It looks like the kind of thing my daughter would bring back from her school art lessons while being shown Ethiopian art. If you stay here much longer, you'll all be slitty-eyed to a group of British exchange students studying in China. So who's on drugs here? He looks as if he's on drugs to a group of boys at a Bangladeshi youth club. It looks as if it was put in by an Indian, pointing at an old-fashioned fuse box in a factory near Edinburgh. Everybody was saying we must have more leisure, now they are complaining they are unemployed during the 1981 recession. If you travel as much as we do, you appreciate the improvements in aircraft design of less noise and more comfort, provided you don't travel in something called economy class which sounds ghastly. Do you work in a strip club to a female sea cadet? You are a woman, aren't you? To a Kenyan woman who offered him a gift. Deaf, if you're near there, no wonder you are deaf to deaf children who were close to a Caribbean steel drum band. How many people have you knocked over this morning on that thing? To a disabled man who was driving a mobility scooter. Kia ora Ehoa. Um, I don't think you actually like my content then. I think what's actually poor taste is Prince Philip telling British people in Beijing that they're gonna turn slitty-eyed. I think saying Cantonese people will eat anything is also poor taste. I think asking indigenous Australians do you still throw spears at each other is poor taste. Telling a 13-year-old boy to lose weight because he wanted to become an astronaut is poor taste. I think saying that the Philippines is empty because they're all at home working at the NHS is poor taste. I could go on and on, but this is definitely not poor taste. I'm not sure if people seem to be aware, but the British monarchy is directly responsible for colonizing half the world, uh, including where I live. The destruction and loss of my own culture is a direct result of colonization from the British monarchy, so no, I don't feel any sadness to all them, they can get fucked. The second thing I want to talk about is Lil Nas X because of his music video Montero or Call Me By Your Name. Call Me By Your Name. Uh, Finally a Call Me By Your Name with an actual gay person in it. I'm not going to go over everything because I'm sure y'all know the basics by now but I'll quickly go over some shit. He uploaded this music video. It was very like controversial for some fucking reason. He's on a strip pole and he dances his way down to hell, wearing little to no clothing, and then he gives Satan a lap dance and then he kills Satan and like takes his horns and puts it on himself. And the entire thing is supposed to be like him like reclaiming when like Christians would always tell him like you're going to hell for being gay and all that shit. And obviously one of the people who had an issue with this was Gun Girl or Poopy Pants. So she said, it's weeks like these that I'm thankful to be blocked by Lil Nas X and then includes a screenshot of what was, I guess, supposed to prove that he had blocked her. And then Lil Nas responded to that saying, I still see your tweets, shitty pants. And then she responded with what I guess she thought was like equally as clever and said, do you still see your dad? Which I mean, saying that to a black person out of nowhere, um, thinking it was like a cute clap back to um, something we know for a fact that you did at a party is, you know, that's, that's, that's gotta be some level of racist, am I wrong? And then Lil Nas X said, yup, and I might fuck yours. From my point of view, I just see, like, absolute bangers from this boy and gun girl who can't control her bowel movements is just continuously, like, it's a bit funky, um, from her end, but she then responded, I'm, this is, this is exactly what she wrote, I'm a just, she deadass says in response to Yup, and I might fuck yours. Lil Nas just threatened to rape my dad. Sounds about what I'd expect. Where was the threat of rape? Um... Just because your father would much rather be in Lil Nas's life than yours does not mean Lil Nas is raping him, Miss Girl. And then the sounds about what I'd expect is giving me very much... a homophobic aftertaste. Why is it what you would expect, Miss Girl? Does it happen to be because he is part of a community that you and your people have branded as pedophiles. Is that it? And I found this post on Instagram, which I think sums up the entire situation quite well, but just a little extra bit of context. The main issue that these people had with his music video and his music in general is that like, what about the kids? Where about the kids? His audience is mainly kids. And there are a lot of like responses to that saying like, 
like if you're letting your kid like on normal YouTube and stuff, kids YouTube, and then you see this thumbnail and let your kid click on it, like that's that's gotta be on you, right? Like this video was obviously very much not meant for kids. It wasn't targeted towards kids. The post says Lil Nas X isn't the issue. The weekend got a Kids Choice Award for a song about cocaine. Your problem isn't with his music or what's in it. I was listening to S and M by Rihanna at eleven years old and nobody said anything. Your problem is that he's gay and poking holes in a religion that has oppressed him. Call it what it is. <laughs> The next thing I want to talk about is Usher because a stripper went on Instagram and posted on their story about how Usher gave them fake money when they went and like saw them perform and like had them dance for him or whatever the fuck. They said, seen this level of fuckery, exactly why we stay away from celebs most of the time. They suck. Cheap as fuck. So disrespectful, this is foul. Working so hard to get nothing in return, this is a joke. Their job is to entertain. Take your cheap ass back home. And the money does not have a trade and value whatsoever. LMAO, don't y'all think he should be blasted on social media for this shit? Like, you're not poor. This man isn't poor. Like, we know his name. He's got Monty. He's posted pictures of him with Monty. He just decided not to share it and, you know, hog all of it. But some bitches on Twitter um, be defending him and they be given weak ass motherfucking arguments including get a new career. If you complain about tips and that's what your livelihood is dependent upon, get a new career. Don't blame celebrities for not giving you something that isn't required. Working hard, big cap, all they're doing is dancing. Your job is an extracurricular activity to most people. Acting like she's laying down foundation for a new building or something. You can say that about so many fucking jobs. Your issue is not that like it's an extracurricular activity or that it isn't hard because stripping is fucking hard. Your issue is that you just don't respect sex workers. If you're a chef, you could be like, cooking is an extracurricular activity. If you're an athlete in any sort of sense, oh, and you're just playing sports, like, that's like a fun thing. That's just an extracurricular activity. Stripping is hard work. Pole dancing is hard work. Work is hard work. Usher threw fake money at a stripper at work, and you talking about her not depending on tips. Maybe you need to go back to school, and maybe Usher need a new career. Don't go to someone's work environment and say it ain't a job. If you think tipping strippers isn't required, all you're saying is that you're a proponent of exploiting sex workers, which is sus as fuck to say the least. I'm actually not concerned with whether it's legal because the law is not my moral or ethical compass. It is wrong to pay people who expected real money with fake money. You want to defer to the law instead of saying you want to exploit people because you know it sounds bad. You know damn well that if she was a waitress, everyone would be flipping their shit. Everyone would be on her side. You need to tip waitresses. They depend on your tips. It's because she's a stripper that you think she deserves no money. You don't respect sex workers. That is the problem. You're defending him not because it's logical or because it's not hard work or anything like that. It's because you don't respect sex workers and you don't think strippers deserve pay. <laughs> The last thing I want to talk about is Dr. Phil because Daniel Bragoli um, made him famous again by bringing up um, a lot of the shit that happened at Turnabout Ranch. That's the thing with these places is you have no evidence. You don't have a phone there. They don't have cameras there. Like there's no evidence of none of this. And obviously all the staff is in on it. So they're not going to snitch on each other. All you really have is the kids that are there. So a young lady, her name is Hannah. She recently um, spoke out because while she was there, she was uh, sexually assaulted. And then when she reported that she was assaulted, uh, she was punished by staff. Now, when I seen the punishment she was given, I knew like, okay, I, yeah, I really have to say something. Like, I really have to have her back on this because I, I truly believe that they did that. Because took in there against my will. They give you transporters. Um, transporters are two people, a male and a female, that come in in the middle of the night. They don't tell them where they're going. They just take them, they handcuff them, they put them in the car. It's basically like kidnapping. We got there, I got out of the car, and I just seen it was like, it looked like, like nothing. It was just super dark. I seen like all the circles and stuff, and I seen the little cabin and I was like oh shit I'm not built for this like I'm this little bougie ass so for the first three days you're there is no showering they put you in a circle which is a it's a TP it's a little TP but it's open and you have to sit there for three days they wouldn't let me lay down for nothing like I was falling asleep and they were like, uh-uh, get up, get up. So I'm just sitting here. Like, they strip you from your whole personality. You have to act like just whoever they want you to act like. They told me, okay, these are what your chores are gonna be. I don't remember what they were, but they were like, these are what your chores are gonna be. This is what you're gonna be doing. Here's your level one binder. 
You do the same thing every day, chop wood, take care of the animals. This place is all about taking away privileges. Like, okay, yeah, the phone is a privilege, TV, like all that. But they take away like necessity privileges, like sleeping on a bed, eating good food, not being cold. I remember the first time I got in trouble. Now, I, this is my first time being here. Like, I don't really, like, yeah, y'all explain to me the rules, but I'm 13. Like, I don't really know, like, exactly what I'm supposed to be doing. There's been times where I uh, I reported um, another student acting inappropriate or um, just anything like that. It didn't even have to do with me, and I would get in trouble for just witnessing it. If so you reported another kid getting bullied by, like, their peers or something, they would just say, well, maybe that's what they need or, like, something like that. Even though there was written rules, if, if a staff was angry at the moment or if you just did something that they felt was bad, you, they, you would get your own punishment. Like They would make up their own punishment for you. It's really frustrating because even if you don't know the rules, if you fuck up, you're still in trouble. It's, there's not no, I didn't know. You're still, you're still in deep shit. Shit that's minor is major to them. So if you do something like the tiniest, tiniest thing, you get a check. If not, you have to be on reflection. Reflection is the punishment. When you do something so bad or if you do anything that ticks them off, you have to go on reflection. You walk in the arena for hours on end. You sit outside in the cold on the on the floor. You have to pick up piles in a wheelbarrow of horse shit. I seen a kid get held down for trying to leave. Just honestly, I don't think he was trying to run away. I think he was just trying to like walk out the door and just like get some time to himself and they restrained him, they held him down. They they had no problem holding kids down, which is against the law. You're not supposed to touch the kids, but they had no problem doing that. One morning I was cleaning up for breakfast and one of the staff members was standing right next to me and she had her walk on her, so I heard everything. Uh, one of the kids, he had tried to steal a car or something. Everyone was screaming on the walkies like it was really crazy. And he ended up killing one of the staff members. They made all the kids that were at Rowdy come down and then they didn't. They told us not to tell us anything. A day later, they have us all, all every kid that's at Turnabout, they have us all in a circle and they're like, listen, there was an incident. I know some of y'all heard it over the walkies, Jimmy died. And so we're all freaking out because Jimmy was, like I said, he was one of them that was there the first day I got there. He was really sweet. Not only did Jimmy die, but one of the other staff members that was there at the time, Alicia, who was the daughter of the nurse. Alicia, she was um, also injured and two years later she died and she was also left disabled after being attacked by Clay. So the mother of um, the kid Clay who killed the staff, she was married to the brother of the president of the program which I also believe is a conflict of interest. I don't know why they would do that. Anymore. So it was really sad, like they wouldn't tell us what happened and all that. And any of the kids that were there, like they couldn't talk about it, but they were like really traumatized by it. Even the ones that weren't there were traumatized by it. Like I heard it over the walkie, like that's scary. Like, like so you got kids here that are killing people. And like I said earlier, my mom had always threatened me as like, oh, I'm sending you away, I'm sending you away. But she never did it. This was the first time she really did it. Like I, I never thought my mom would do this. So what parents need to understand is if your child is acting out because of trauma like sexual abuse or maybe like the kids parents got divorced or just anything like that you don't send your kid to a program like this you need to send your kid to a program where they're not being punished and and it's not about everything's not about you're in trouble you're in trouble and it's just it's just really fucked up you're you're just using children to keep your ranch going and you're not even feeding them or letting them sleep in decent conditions i don't i'm not really sure why dr phil still sends kids here it just it really doesn't make sense like are you trying to help them or are you trying to hurt them even more because i mean we all know he's a phony as it is but like don't be sending kids somewhere just to make make it look like you're trying to do something and she probably said this in a separate video because I do remember her saying this, I just don't know where it came from. She said that she doesn't think she showered at all within the two weeks that she was there and she like wasn't allowed to change her underwear or something like that. And so obviously she developed a fucking UTI and she brought it up with the staff and she's like, yo, I've got a UTI, this obviously isn't healthy and it needs to be fixed. And they just didn't give her any medication, they just refused to help her and she had to wait away her UTI. There is also proof on Dr. Phil's own channel that the like whole kidnapping while you're asleep thing actually happens. Like the whole, it's midnight and they're coming to take you away kind of thing that actually happens. Well, it's just after 3.30 in the morning. We're down the street from the family home. We've been texting with April and she's ready for us to come. It's a big day for Annalisa. She's on her way to the Dr. Phil show. Honey, wake up. I love you. We decided to go to and we're going to the Dr. Phil. Dr. Phil also kind of responded, I guess, to Danielle's um, complaints. I don't know. 
Dr. Phil was questioned in an interview about the video and he responded. So Phil, I'm, um, I'm reading the New York Post this weekend. I open up this uh, story about a teen rapper named Bad Bobby. Bad Bobby. So first of all, she goes on there calling me by the wrong name. Bitch, your kids probably listen to me. Your kids probably know who I am. Your husband probably knows who I am. So why are you acting like you don't know who I am? Once again, Danielle has brought steam to somebody's talk show. whoop de doo hasn't done it before. Anyways, her mom brought her on the show to say I can't I can't handle her anymore. So here's that here's that moment off your show. And all these hoes laughing like so funny. Did you say the 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 hoes are laughing? Yep. Why would this be the only clip you show of me? Why don't you show me being nominated for a Billboard award? Why don't you show me having multiple gold and platinum plaques? Why don't you show me being youngest female rapper to hit billboard. Why, why don't you show stuff like that? So the audience are a bunch of hoes. Yeah. Catch me outside, how about that? You know the shit I was hearing in the crowd? So for you to tell me I can't say something back to people who are saying something to me? Second of all, the fucking lady who runs the show said to me, oh, if you get, when you get up there, do whatever you feel like will, will make a good show. Kick, scream, punch. What else is there but some tough love? Tough love at a fucking ranch? To me, I think tough love is like telling your kid no and they want something because you know it's better for them even if you know they really want it. Or, or not letting them do something that may be bad for them even though you know that they want to do it. Or, or telling them about themselves. That's tough love. Malnourishing, humiliating, screaming at sleep depriving that's not fucking tough love she says that the place that she was recommended to go was uh, abusive to her wouldn't let her sleep that, that's all i said was that they wouldn't let me sleep that's that's the only accusation i just said oh yeah and they wouldn't let me sleep it was so bad he also his like main point of the entire thing was like i have no affiliation with the ranch so like if danielle had a problem with it i assume like she would have filed a complaint and like brought it up with the authorities five years ago when she was like fucking 13 and nobody trusted her and there was, you know, like she was a rascal and also 13 and like probably looking for attention and all that shit. It's just giving me very much like, if you were raped, why didn't you report it kind of vibes, you know what I mean? And to like the whole, I'm not affiliated with the ranch, like there's not only an entire like section on Turnabout Ranch's website dedicated to like their frequent appearance on the Dr. Phil show, but Danielle Bergoli also said that he is friends with the person who runs it, so he sends people there for free and he doesn't have to pay for anything. And also, there have, regardless of whether or not you are personally affiliated or like you like have any control over what actually happens there, there have been multiple complaints and lawsuits in the past before Bad Baby ever appeared on your show. So why did you not notice something then? Why didn't you stop sending all these people from your show to this crusty ass camp then? And he and the news reporter essentially just decided that there was nothing left to do to kids like that. So essentially if you're too over your head and all this shit and you decide that parenting isn't really for you after you've had a fucking child, you should just abuse them or send them somewhere for other people to abuse them. Because traumatizing your kids very much should be the last resort. And I don't really know how to describe this next part, so I'm gonna show y'all the clip. It's not easy in this day and time. With social media influences, fast-paced life. Kids grow up really fast these days. You know what, Phil? Um, I gotta tell you, the more I hear from teachers and coaches and other parents of the behavior of kids at school, I mean, I thought it was shocking when a teacher told me, oh, five or six years ago, that the kids regularly drop F-bombs at the teacher, telling them to F this and F you and, and all the rest, and th that's normal. And now my kids who are in middle school and high school say, it is normal. How did we get to this point where you're allowed, A, to drop an F-bomb anywhere if you're a kid, and B, that you're allowed to do that to a teacher? Well, you know, it's just a, a lack of consequences. Children are not pets nor are they robots. If you are uncomfortable with the fact that young people have to rebel and act out in order to find and express themselves in a world that refuses to let them do so, then you should not be parenting or working with kids. If you cannot respect kids, especially like older kids, like teenagers who like know what the fuck your bullshit is, if you can't respect them and you can't treat teenagers as your equals, then you cannot expect them to respect you. Being older doesn't make you superior, it just makes you more wrinkly. But I don't understand because this is all in relation to Turnabout Ranch and the physical abuse that has allegedly happened there. So why are you bringing up the argument of consequences in this debate? Debate. There is no consequences with these allegations because if 
you're saying consequences in regards to this situation, in my opinion, I am only hearing a justification for physical abuse. Discipline can be taught without physical abuse. Physically abusing somebody to not do something, that's not discipline. Discipline is when you have respect for people and you understand that certain actions are wrong. Physically abusing somebody so they don't do something is installing fear into their mind. You are putting fear into somebody so they don't do something. That's not discipline. That is bullying. That is abuse. Discipline is when somebody actually wants to respect you and understands you cannot do something because it's wrong. Not because, oh, I'm scared if I do that thing, I'm going to receive some form of physical punishment. And these people are taking serious allegations about sexual abuse and turning it into a conversation about disciplining children who need to face consequences. These two aren't the same thing. Sexual abuse and a kid needing discipline are not the same thing. And I've made a video on this before. I'm not sure if I've deleted it, but like Dr. Phil isn't a good person. Like he's just not. He, it's very, like, I, if the video's still up, just fucking watch that one. I'm pretty sure it's shit, but like, I'm not gonna explain it all again. But he just takes advantage of vulnerable people. Shoot. Todd, Dr. Phil. Hi, I'm Todd. Nice to meet you. How you feeling, man? <laughs> Can you walk? Barely. Hmm. I have to have help. This is Todd Herzog, a vulnerable man who went onto the show Dr. Phil because he was an alcoholic and he really just wanted to seek help. A vulnerable and brave guy who's facing an extremely serious addiction. He claimed to have gone into the dressing room and found a bottle of vodka. Yes, the team apparently just left out a bottle of vodka, knowing an alcoholic was going to come on the show. And now he sadly did drink this bottle of vodka and apparently the people who ran the show found out about this and how they decided to help him was a bit of a unique way. Instead of saying, oh, you probably shouldn't go on this show, they decided to give him Xanax, apparently, and then they brought him onto the show by carrying him. Right. Sorry, I'm very... That's all right. Brandon, why don't you get over there and take Debbie's spot? Right. Yeah, I'll, I'll go. <laughs> this is not a man that should be on an entertainment-based talk show. This is not a man who should be being put in front of millions of people. Because this video got six million views. Six million views saw this person in this state and they laughed. They were entertained by it. Because let's not forget, people, these shows, they are ultimately created to create profit to get an income to make millions of dollars by exploiting the vulnerable. Remember when everyone noticed that the therapist in Shane Dawson's documentary about Jake Paul was really shit? And I'm using documentary very loosely here, but it was because she was like talking very negatively about mental health and like referred to mental illnesses as gross. How about we hold Dr. Phil to that same standard? Because this girl came in, look, let me tell everyone, like, if you go on Dr. Phil's show, you're very much encouraged and sometimes just straight up told to, like, you have to, like, very much amp up your persona, whatever they give to you, whatever, it, like, you've decided that it is. Like, you have to amp up your persona in order to make the audience, like, react more and make the entire show more dramatic. So this girl came in and she essentially said that, like, she has a different apartment somewhere else or whatever the fuck. She either didn't live with her parents at all or, like, occasionally moved to this apartment because she suspected that she had seasonal depression. Now seasonal depression or just like depression that is triggered by a shift in weather or seasons is a very much real thing. But Dr. Phil, who was apparently, you know, a psychologist, essentially mocked her and was like, okay, so you need a different apartment because you get a little bit sad during the winter, which you can say that about like fucking anything. Like, oh, you have depression. Okay, so you're just a little sad in general and you don't know how to deal with it. That's kind of embarrassing. Oh, uh, you have anxiety, so you get worried over little things. That's cute. You're a psychologist, or at least you have a doctor's in psychology. Regardless of whether or not you are allowed to practice, you should probably know that mental illnesses are real and can be extremely serious. I thought that was a given. I don't think you necessarily need a degree to like know that, but 
I guess I was wrong. And what I mean by whether or not you are allowed to practice is the fact that he is not licensed. The reason he calls himself Dr. Phil is because he has a doctor's in psychology. But not only does he not do that degree justice, he's just not allowed to practice. He's not a licensed therapist. It doesn't mean he's allowed to use a psychologist or therapist title in order to draw people in. And the only thing it means is that he's probably aware of how harmful he is to people that need help rather than how helpful he is. So that is all I have for you guys today. If you liked this video, if you liked me, make sure to like and subscribe. If you didn't like me, make sure to get in contact with my teachers because I bet you'll have a lot in common and make sure to stay safe and stay whoop, hydrated.